for spend. Yahoo Finance has an exclusive first look at Vantage Score's latest data on consumers' credit. CEO and President Silvio Tavares joins us now with a closer look at the trends he's seeing. Silvio, it's always good to have you on the program. So it's interesting, Silvio, we, we, we do have a, a few different reads and, and checks on the consumer this week. We got big tech reporting, uh, Amazon and Apple, Meta and Microsoft. Of course, we had that big jobs report on Friday, Silvio. But let, let's see what you're saying. Just big picture. How does the consumer look, Silvio, right now? How healthy? How strong and resilient? Well, the economy is definitely at an inflection point, as you point out. Um, most consumers are doing well. We judge credit health by looking at the average Vantage score. And the average Vantage score through the end of June is 702, which uh, a low score is Vantage score 300. A perfect score is Vantage score 850. So 702 is actually a very healthy score. And we've actually seen that credit score uh, trend up during the year. Um, now, of course, though, the law of averages mask some trends because because what we're seeing is that mid-tier consumer, uh, Vantage Score Prime, that mid-tier is shrinking by about one percentage point as a lot of consumers are moving up into Vantage Score Super Prime and some are dropping below. And so it's a mixed picture overall, overall healthy, but there's some segments that are starting to see some pain, uh, including you know a, a, a consumer that's likely to shop at some place like, uh, like McDonald's. Silvio, all right, so a mixed picture. I'm also curious what you're hearing from the bank, Silvio. Uh, what are they saying right now about the consumer? Who are they lending to? Well, that's one of the interesting things that we saw in, in June. Um, you know, everyone realizes the economy is doing well, but everyone expects things are going to slow down. Consumers are a little pessimistic about that. But what we're seeing is banks are very optimistic. In fact, a surprise in June in almost every credit category, credit cards, auto loans, mortgages, in every one of those categories, we saw more loans being made by banks. So banks are significantly more optimistic about what's to come than consumers are right now. Very interesting contrast. You know, Sylvia, so, so we got big tech earnings this week. We got that big jobs report. We also have the Fed, uh, Sylvia. And traders right now basically seem to think it's a lock that you're going get to get a cut in September. Do you think so, Sylvia? Well, I think traders, unfortunately, are wrong. And that's what this credit gauge is showing. Um, as how you come, said, how it, come so? That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. The the real the reality is um, the traders are really wrong, and we're seeing that in the June Vantage Score credit gauge. Um, you know, nobody expects a rate cut this week. Obviously, Wednesday that's not going to be a surprise. What's more interesting is what happens in September, and when you see banks continuing to lend as they are in the June credit gauge, that's going to worry the Fed that the economy is still hot and make it much less likely that they're going to cut in September. So I think the conventional wisdom is probably wrong. The economy is still quite hot. And, um, you know, what the Fed doesn't want to do is cut before they absolutely need to. And uh, looking at the rate, latest data, actually, the economy is still running hot. What do you think, Sylvia, just to you know, play the other side here, some folks say, listen, you need to cut and they'll come on this show and they'll see you need to cut because they're looking at the labor market and specifically unemployment rate, Silvio, and how it has been creeping up. Yeah, well, you know, I think the reality is, is if you look overall, the economy is still quite healthy. Yes, there are segments, pockets, but the, the Fed really has to look at the overall picture. And when you look at that overall picture, what you're seeing is more consumers uh, having improved economic circumstances than the other way around, folks that are dropping down. Now, the segment that's hurting clearly is younger, less affluent consumers. Um, those folks uh, that don't own a home, there you're seeing the pain. But the reality is the Fed has a blunt instrument, which is interest rates, and they need to do it, uh, change that based on what's best for the biggest portion of Americans. And the fact is, most Americans are doing quite well heading into uh, the second half of the year. Well, and that's interesting because I, I want to get your take on the election, Silvio. Uh, you knew how to go there, politics, Trump, Harris. You study, you know, you're, you're watching the consumer very carefully, Silvio. So how does the health of the consumer play into the election? Well, as I mentioned, overall consumers are doing very healthy, but there's a segment of voters which is hurting already, right? Those are younger, less affluent, typically not homeowners. And those consumers are asking a simple question to politicians. What are you going to do for me for the second half of the year and if you get elected? You've got the entire Congress up for election. You've got, of course, got the presidential election. And you have to be able to answer the question for those younger, less affluent consumers. What are you going to do for me economically? Whoever gets the 
answer to that question, Republican or Democrat, whoever gets the answer to that question right is going to win the election. That's simply put how it's going to play out. Silvio, always good to have you on the show, my friend. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on, Josh. Good to see you.